Mob Love is one hell of a sprawling, ambitious, and unforgivingly cluttered tapestry of a mixed media franchise, spanning all manner of titles, stories, eras, genres, and platforms. And his reputation and influence within the visual novel sphere cannot be overstated, as its most well known entry, Mob Love Alternative, is often revered as one of the best VNs ever made. With a Mov Love Alternative animated adaptation airing in fall of 2021, and Mov Love Integrate lurking somewhere beyond the horizon, the time couldn't be more ripe to look back at and unpack the trove of installments that brought us to where we are now, while simultaneously giving the inevitable wave of Mov Love hopefuls a crash course on the history of this franchise, as well as how best to get started. The origins of Mov Love can be traced all the way back to 1999, with a romance game known as Kimi ga Ita Kisetsu, shortened to Kimi Ita, the debut work of a nascent visual novel outfit called Aj, also pronounced Aju. While fairly paint-by-numbers and unremarkable when regarded on its own, Kimi Ita is nonetheless notable for two reasons. Number one, for establishing the world that serves as the setting where the Mov Love franchise would go on to take place and number two for being the debut VN work of scenario writer Yoshida Hirohiko, also known by the name Yoshimune Koki, who would go on to serve as the representative director of Aju, eventually helming its flagship title, Mov Love Alternative, and overseeing all of the franchise's properties. Though it didn't leave as much of a lasting impact as the games that would follow, Kimi Ita was nonetheless enough of a success for Aju to establish a foothold in the industry, and even received an updated re-release in 2011, which included some additional content to more closely couple it to the rest of the titles that share the same universe, albeit retroactively. The next of those titles would see a release two years later in 2001, another romance game called Kimi ga Nozomu Eien, shortened to Kimi Nozo which follows Takayuki Narumi and his burgeoning relationship with the painfully shy and insecure Haruka Suzumiya, a relationship which was the brainchild of their mutual friend, the sporty and temperamental Mitsuki Hayase, who herself secretly harbors feelings for Takayuki. As far as romance games go, Kimi Nozo is pretty close to your standard fare. However, it must be stated that the story does feature some unusually heavy and relentlessly sobering drama the type of raw and debilitating angst that shatters the romantic illusion of idyllic and fluffy adolescence with zero remorse, espousing the fragility of the seemingly inseparable bonds of companionship in the face of uncontrollable, fatalistic adversity. In spite of its more pessimistic and melancholic take on the genre, Kimi Noza would serve as Aju's breakout hit, garnering enough sales and popularity to greenlight multiple ports to consoles such as the Dreamcast and PS2, as well as a 14-episode anime adaptation airing in 2003 landing both the franchise and studio Aju on the radar of mainstream otaku audiences. Doubly so, considering the Kimi Nozo anime would go on to be localized for Western audiences under the name Rumbling Hearts. In 2002, Aju released a follow-on side story to Kimi Nozo called Akane Maniacs, focusing on the escapades of fiery transfer student and hopeless romantic Joji Goda, and his vain attempts at courting Haruka Suzumiya's younger sister, Akane, who featured among Kimi Nozo's central cast. While Akane Maniacs did a decent job expanding the scope of Kimi Nozo's lore and characters through the refreshing lens of over-the-top comedic parody, which is in stark contrast to Kimi Nozo's more subversive approach, the game's real raison d'etre was to serve as the bridge between Kimi Nozo and Aju's shiny up-and-coming new franchise, none other than Muv Love itself, which was primed for release the following year. In this way, Akane Maniacs can be thought of as a promotional vehicle for Muv Love, as it prominently features the entirety of Muv Love's cast, despite their roles in the storyline between Goda and Akane being little more than ancillary, almost as retroactive, glorified cameos. And the game ends with the baton being handed over from Goda to a new protagonist, almost literally, against the backdrop of Muv Love's iconic score. Akane Maniacs would eventually be adapted as a three-episode OVA. With the stage set and all eyes front and center, our star attraction, Muv Love, would finally see a release in 2003 as a title consisting of two separate acts, Muv Love Extra and Muv Love Unlimited. The first act, Muv Love Extra, is yet another romance game, picking up pretty much precisely where Akane Maniacs left off and following the story of Takeru Shirogane and his childhood best friend Sumika Kagami as he grapples with the unorthodox arrival of transfer student Meya Mitsurugi, the heiress to a major conglomerate who has ties all the way up the political ladder. 
Hilarity and drama ensues as Takeru struggles to disentangle his feelings for Sumika and Maya primarily, but also for a number of other girls in his class. Summing up Extra is quite simple. It's about as straightforward a rom-com dating sim as you can get. Pick your heroine, pick your route, sit back, and enjoy the ride. The second act, Muvlove Love Unlimited, marks a major turning point in the franchise, via a distinct genre shift. It's a sequel to Extra, where Takeru suddenly awakens back near the beginning of Extra's timeline, but instead of finding Sumika or Maya by his side, he instead finds himself in a ravaged and dilapidated version of his bedroom and hometown, in a parallel version of planet Earth that's under siege by hostile extraterrestrial lifeforms, which humanity has dubbed the Beta. Racing down the street and arriving at what used to be his high school, he discovers that it's now one of the UN's foremost military outposts to defend against this alien invasion, with his erstwhile classmates having enlisted as cadets, and his erstwhile teachers calling the shots as the base's high-ranking officers. The names and faces may be the same, but Takeru quickly learns that he's starting from square one in this unfamiliar new world, as he reluctantly enrolls as the outpost's newest recruit, swearing an oath to serve and protect alongside his companions. Despite being set in a desolate, post-apocalyptic dystopia where humanity is hanging on by the barest thread, Unlimited is still, for the most part, a fairly lighthearted and at times surprisingly poignant coming-of-age journey, as both Takeru and his fellow recruits learn to accept one another and grow both as individuals and as inseparable comrades-in-arms. Three years later, in 2006, the sequel to Muv Love, known as Muv Love Alternative, would be released. Without spoiling too much, let's say that though Muv Love Unlimited doesn't end on a completely hopeless note, it is far from the golden ending that Takeru desired, and thus, in typical visual novel fashion, our hero is given one final chance to set things right, as the clock gets rewound back to the moment when Takeru found himself in this battle-torn version of planet Earth, but with all of his memories from Unlimited intact. And thus begins the grand finale of the Muv Love Saga, as Takeru leverages his foreknowledge to free humanity from the clutches of the Beta, leading to a sweeping and ambitious sci-fi drama, packed to the brim with intense pitch mech battles, Byzantine pseudoscience, intricate political machinations, thought-provoking ideological showdowns, soul-crushing sacrifice, exhilarating narrative twists and turns, and to top it all off, some of the most deeply emotional and evocative character moments to ever grace the medium. Despite taking place in the same world as Unlimited, the events that unfold in Alternative are much more grim and somber in tone, evolving the narrative from what was a humble and carefree high school dating sim into a full-fledged wartime epic, a grandiose, all-in-one political drama, space opera, and military sci-fi thriller. Muv Love Alternative is Aju's magnum opus, a towering behemoth of an in-game that caps off the trilogy with a breathtakingly theatrical flourish, as all the seemingly incongruous components and set pieces across the previous two titles fall satisfyingly into place. Rest assured, it didn't reach its coveted position among the top titles of VNDB for no reason. Most notably, renowned manga creator Hajime Isayama has gone on record multiple times about how Alternative served as his chief inspiration for Attack on Titan, and further elaborating that he regards director Yoshida Hirohiko as the kind of once-in-a-generation artistic visionary that the scene desperately needs more of, one who is able to craft a believable, breathing organism of a world, a world painstakingly assembled from a diverse set of perspectives, ideologies, life experiences, and wells of knowledge. With the rousing success of the Muvlove trilogy, it's no surprise that extended content galore started to pour in at an alarming rate in the years following Alternative's release. First up, a light novel series, originally published in Tech Geon magazine in 2007, called Total Eclipse, following the story of several soldiers working for the US, Japan, and several other nations as they cooperate on the deployment of an experimental prototype to fight the Beta, in the years leading up to the start of Alternative's story, acting as a direct chronological prequel. Total Eclipse would go on to see a 24-episode animated adaptation in 2012 and a visual novel adaptation in 2013, with a localized release at the end of 2021. Next up, the light novel series Schwartz's Marken, also originally published in Tech Geon. This story takes place in 1983, decades before the start of Alternative and much closer to the time of humanity's first contact with the Beta, acting as a prequel to both Total Eclipse and Alternative. Schwartz's Marken would see a two-part visual novel adaptation released between 2015 and 16, and a 12-episode animated adaptation in 2016. 
continuing on the compilations Photon Flowers and Photon Melodies. Starting in 2010, a series of side stories spanning the alternative universe known as Muv Love Alternative Chronicles would be released at periodic intervals throughout the following years. Photon Flowers and Photon Melodies were released in 2014 as an attempt to bring all this scattered bonus material together into two comprehensive titles, while also throwing in a few extra side stories from fan discs and the like. Both Flowers and Melodies feature a smattering of alternative-specific vignettes that serve to flesh out the world of alternative and the backstories of some of its more prominent characters, as well as two epilogue chapters, one for extra and one for alternative. The stories range from silly to serious, from claustrophobic and contemplative character pieces to overdramatized, shenanigan-filled spy capers and everything in between. Muv Love Unlimited The Day After is a series of visual novels released beginning in 2010, serving as an official continuation to the story of Unlimited, in a parallel timeline where Takeru doesn't rewind back to the point where the timeline branches off into the story of Alternative. Instead, he continues to fight on, alongside the rest of the survivors, waging an ostensibly hopeless war of attrition against the imminent alien invasion. At present, one prologue chapter and three main chapters have been released. Finally, in 2019, during a special event commemorating the 20th anniversary of Studio Aju, a direct sequel to Muvlove Alternative was announced, tentatively titled Muvlove Integrate. To date, details are scarce, such as what platform it will be released on, or if it will even be a visual novel at all, though all available promotional material thus far points to that being the case. So with all that covered, we arrive at the driving question, namely, how does one get into Muvlove? Despite its convoluted release history, Muvlove is not terribly complicated for newcomers. First, start with the Muvlove visual novel and play through Muvlove Extra. Completing both Sumika and Maya's routes will unlock Muvlove Unlimited. You can go back and play through the other girls' routes if you find yourself invested in them enough individually, and though Chizuru and Ayamine's routes are a soft recommendation, none of them are strictly required. Next, play through Unlimited once. It's mainly a linear storyline, and though it concludes with a particular heroine depending on what choices you've made, the overarching relevant story beats are identical, no matter the route. Finally, play through Muvlove Alternative, which is essentially completely linear from start to finish. Both Muvlove and Muvlove Alternative can be found on Steam. The other option is to start with Kimi Nozo, though this is only really worth it if you're either into soap opery, borderline mawkish melodrama, or are looking to explore a deconstruction of dating sims. An official translation of Kimi Nozo isn't available at the time of this recording, though one is planned for release. There's also the anime, which, while not a bad adaptation, occasionally succumbs to the typical pitfalls of compressing 50 hours worth of reading into 14 episodes. Of note is that if you do decide to start with Kimi Nozo, you might as well watch the Akane Maniacs OVA by whatever means at your disposal, as neither the OVA nor the visual novel have been officially licensed. From there, you can move on to Muvlove, that is, Extra First, followed by Unlimited, and finally Alternative. While starting with Kimi Nozo is not broadly recommended, for diehard completionists who wish to get as much of the full picture as they can, it's undeniable that you will gain a deeper understanding and appreciation for the shared universe, as Muvla features a ton of callbacks to, motifs rooted in, and characterization originating from the world of Kimi Nozo, especially once you reach the later parts of Alternative. As for the bonus material, all of it is completely at your discretion, depending on how invested you find yourself after the credits roll in Alternative. Naturally, if you find yourself more attached to Unlimited's world, the day after makes for a no-brainer of a recommendation, which is available on Steam. For fans of Extra or Alternative, feel free to go after the wealth of side stories compiled in Photon Melodies and Photon Flowers, also available on Steam. Total Eclipse and Schwartz's Markin are similarly at your discretion, depending on how much of the history and lore of Alternative's world you want to explore. The anime adaptations can be found at the time of this recording on the usual streaming hubs, or you can turn to the localized visual novel releases once they are available. Finally, what about the Muvlove alternative anime? While it's certainly intriguing and worthwhile to see how the adaptational differences play out, beyond that, I would say it's important to consider that the alternative anime is being released as an isolated entry without the context of extra or unlimited to provide a sturdy foundation. 
Because of this, even if it were the greatest visual novel adaptation since Steins Gate, the recommended path of introduction to the franchise would still be via the visual novels and the order outlined earlier, as, to put it simply, Alternative is a narrative that was never meant to stand completely on its own. Regardless of how this Alternative adaptation shakes out, Mavlov is still very much worth your time and attention. The best case scenario is that it will serve as a catalyst for a whole new generation of fans to climb aboard as the franchise's own 20-year anniversary draws near. For all the potential newcomers out there whose curiosity has now been successfully piqued, welcome to the vast and captivating universe of Mavlov. I can assure you that it's an absolutely wild and emotionally fulfilling thrill ride of triumph and tears that you won't soon forget.